in the last 10 minutes, I have to talk here a little bit about Turkestan cockroaches. You couldn't have a talk about urban insects without talking about cockroaches. So they, they are really something here. So, and, and again, this is a, a very, very interesting species here. It's become widespread now in New Mexico, Arizona, throughout California. It's rapidly spreading. It, it, it um, is from the desert and semi-arid deserts of Central Asia. Probably came back from, with military equipment. The first time it came into California was at the Sharp Army Dome outside of Sacramento. So mm, maybe Afghanistan, Iraq, you know, a few of these places where it came in. First discovered in 78 uh, in Arizona in 84, but it, it has quickly uh, begun to, to spread now. And, and again, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have some better pictures here in a minute. And again, typically you find these under raised concrete water meter boxes, the places where you'd find the black water bug or the oriental cockroach, the same kind of area. Heavy vegetation underneath the you know, logs and uh, rock piles and things like that. One of the things that's unique about both the Oriental and the Turkestan is that the cockroaches cannot climb smooth surfaces. They don't have little pads on their feet. So if they get into a bathtub or if they get into a jar or something like that, they can't get out. And so that's one of the easy ways to identify these because you put the roach in there and they can't get out of the jar, then you know you have either an Oriental or a Turkestan. I mean, those, those are only two they can't get out of the jar. But um, this is why people often see these. Uh, you know, at our church here outside of Val Vista, we have these, and they're, they're all inside the church. And, and they're in the men's room because they get inside the, you know, they can't get out. So there you have you know, these, these Turkestan roaches in there. So it's, like, it's like, well, we got a problem. So like I say, you know, going back in the literature, this, this is the area of Central Asia where, where these are predominantly found. The Oriental is predominantly found in, in this area of, of Asia. Uh, the Orientals came hundreds of years ago. Uh, they, they worked their way through England and then were brought in. But uh, you know, just here in the last 30 or 40 years, uh, our, our adventures here in the Middle East or in the Central Asia have, have brought this species uh, back here. Now, this one is, is one that you can actually go online this afternoon and you can buy a thousand live uh, Turkestan roaches for 1990. So you can have your own colony. They're called red racers or rusty reds because of their color. The reason that people buy these is they use them to feed their lizards, snakes, birds, anything that needs a live animal source, insect source. Because this one is quite easy to rear. And remember, it can't climb glass or smooth surfaces. So if you put it in an aquarium, throw in some dog chow, give it some water, yeah, yeah instant instant roaches. And so, that's just like I say, you can actually buy these. So here, here we have an invasive insect face, you know, that's been a problem, but you can buy it on the internet now. So it's like, holy smoke. You know, it's going to be like everywhere. And so here, here they are. Here's the, the, these are the nymphs. This is, this is the Turkish stand. So you, here's that red racer. It's, it's reddish. The legs are reddish. The back of the abdomen is black. And here's our, our, our common water bug, people call her a black beetle, or, but that's the oriental. So here are the nymphs. Here are the adult males. And this is really pretty interesting. Here's the adult male, the oriental. Notice that the wings are half the length of the body, so they're not really functional. But in the Turkestan, you can see that the wings are the entire length of the body, plus they're brown. And, and they have these little white uh, arm bands along the wing. So again, adult males are really easy to tell apart. But again, here are the females, and the females, it's not real obvious until you look at two structures. Here on the Turkestan, there are these little arm, this is a, a wing bud up here, and the little arm band is light. And notice the distance between the wing bands are different between the two. But again, this, 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 this Turkestan was here for a lot of years, and, and most people didn't recognize the difference at all. And, and this is the one now that is quickly displacing and eliminating this species. So chances are, you know, people that, that, that this is going to be the pest species that most people encounter, not, not the oriental anymore. Again, and here are the egg capsules. They're, they're very, very similar. 
So my student, she was working as her undergraduate research project for the last two or three years, and this was the question, is why is this insect displacing the oriental cockroach throughout the southwestern United States? So she, she reared these and took care of these and everything else and, and, uh, and did these studies, and we, we've been publishing them. But, uh, but what it is is that, uh, you know, are they more highly adapted to the southwestern environment? You know, do they lose less water? Can they tolerate higher temperatures or lower temperatures than orientals? And, and the basic answer to this is no. That both of these species came from the Middle East and Central East. They are both arid adapted insects. They, they live in a world of, of very dry conditions, so they're very successful there. It's actually this right down here. It's that the life history parameters, the Turkestan literally outbreeds the Oriental. They just breed faster, and there are more offspring, and then they quickly, just by numbers, begin displacing the Oriental. And so this is what we're currently seeing. So this is, again, uh, you know, the Orient, the, the Turkestan is, is slightly smaller, but the life cycle is much faster. Typically, that Oriental cockroach, it's, you know, it's about a one year from egg to the adult female, but with the Turkestan female, it's like from egg to adult, it's like about seven months. So see, there's this huge gap. She's already producing for five months, and her Oriental counterpart's not laying an egg capsule yet, so they just literally outcompete them. And again, uh, at elevated temperatures, uh, the Turkestan is a little more arid adapted, but, but not significantly so. Again, think about, you know, when you've seen pictures, you know, from Afghanistan and Turkestan, it's really cold and nasty in the winter there. I mean, really freezing. Plus, it's hot and dry like this in the summer. So again, this insect is, is really a tough insect. And uh, it's, uh, where, where do you find them in and around houses? It's these typical, it's these uh, water meter boxes, uh, um, you know, anything that's uh, down in the ground, a vault or anything like that. They like these cool areas. Raised concrete, hollow trees. Uh, again, you know, if people are feeding birds and, and have pet foods and whatnot outside, this is something they really like. These roaches like to feed on bird droppings. So, again, these are the things that you would look for uh, around the structure and try to eliminate. So again, you know, underneath potted plants, and, and again, this is a, an excellent food source, and, and the pooch here, you know, for any spilled food or whatnot at night, when they come out, then they're, they're going to be feeding. So these would be the areas you would want to focus and try to... Perimeter sprays and these granular types of treatments are, are not very effective. Again, these insects are, are reclusive and nocturnal. They're going to be hiding. So, you know, the sprays that you put out are likely not going to contact them. They're not going to contact the insecticides. So, you know, what I would propose and have people do is just use a cockroach bait, one of the cockroach gel baits. They're readily available online. You can get them at the stores and whatnot. This is a, a you know, it's a tube of bait. Uh, inside this is about 30 grams of, of, of a cockroach sort of food. And in it, they, they put you know, several different insecticides. One's fipronil or hydromethyl and those. And these are really quite effective. If you go to, the, to those Harvard sites, like I showed you, if you put in some dabs of this bait, at night the roaches will come and feed on them, and it'll just zap them. So I can say, just really, uh, uh, really quite uh, effective. So, but it's important. You got to find the feeding and nesting sites. Apply the, the roach gel bait, and again, numerous little dabs. You know, you don't need a big glob. You know, these cockroaches just need a little bit of food. So if you put out a lot of little dabs, it's much, much better than just one big glob. And you just want to go back and inspect occasionally. So, you, you know, typically you'll see the dead roaches in the bottom of the water meter box, and you, and you know you've got them. But you might need to, to reapply the gel maybe once or twice. Great way to control roaches, like in sewer systems. It's like in downtown Riverside, you know, around the Mission Inn, get rid of roaches. Just put a tube of that bait underneath the rim of the sewer lid, and uh, you know, you'll get like up to a year control. You know, roaches. So, re really nice. So, you don't need to spray and use other things. These baits are really, really nice. They're really, really effective and, and whatnot. And so, that, that's really the, the way to approach it. Now, one last. You, you guys, especially since you do a lot of gardening and whatnot. Mm. So if you see this particular roach, 
I'd love to have some of these live. It's very, very <laughs> tiny. It's very tiny. It's half the size of a German roach. So a German roach is about that long. It's half that size. And, and from what we know about it, it's called the three-lined roach here, or sometimes they call it the happy roach. Now, I have no idea why it's called the happy roach. But there are three lines to it. And uh, it looks like sort of a German cockroach. It lives outdoors. Apparently, it likes to be in the leaf litter. It likes to be, you know, northern and central California. People find it around the composite pile and stuff. So, and, and, you know, and it was first reported, you know, online. You can go online and just uh, do three-line brooch, and you'll see some of the people who have put it on. But, uh, you know, like I say, very, very little is known about this. Uh, you know, again, this one is probably also from Central Asia. How it got here, what it does, what it looks on, I have no idea. So, you know, keep, keep your eye out for this one. And, and again, you know, if you just sort of collect it up with the leaf litter and stuff and put it in a bag and just send it to UCI. Yeah. Quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then we'll have it. Like I say, the, the first specimens I got were from San Luis Obispo. I, I tried to feed them dog food, but they, they didn't like dog food. So, so it must be something in the leaf litter, something. So they croaked? They what? <laughs> they cro yeah, they all died. That was, that was sad. That was sad. <laughs> I bet your wife wasn't sad. Well, I'm not allowed to bring those home. <laughs> she, she inspects everything I bring home. <laughs> What do you have in the, in the mason jars? You know? <laughs> now, the spiders are a no-no. You know? oh, Bringing home God. brown widows or black widows or recluse spiders, that's a no-no. That I can't do. So most of the time, she, she doesn't her. think too much about the roaches because they can't get out of their jar anyway. <laughs> yeah. So there are just roaches specific to California. Like we, We'll never get the big, ugly things they have in Florida. No, yeah. Her question is, is, yeah, with the roaches. So, I mean, are we likely to get those if you have, like, in Florida or the Madagascar or Palmetto? We have the palmetto bugs. The palmetto bugs are the ones the American roaches live in the sewers here. Really? They live in the sewers. That palmetto bug is, a, is an American cockroach. It lives in the sewers here. Oh, yeah. When they do the road birth, like, they're changing out all of our sewer in the south part. So you'll see a road. But it's, they're so low. You know, they're not like the German where there's two. Yeah. Yeah, so that one's already here. But like in Florida, the tropical species, no, but, you know, an interesting one is that someone, if they brought it, it was a McDonald's from a, uh, in, inside one of those big shopping malls where the McDonald's is inside and had all the planters. They had Surnam cockroaches actually living in the planter boxes. So at night, the Surnams would leave the planter box and then go off, you know, McDonald's and everywhere else for a snack. And then come back to the planter box in the morning. So it is possible. You know, and like in zoos. Zoos and terrariums or where you have tropical situations, it is possible if you bring one of these tropical species that Yeah, I mean, I, I have 38 species of roaches alive in the lab, so they will go through. But you have to... No, no, no. Uh, yeah, so, uh-huh. What is the difference Hawaii that fly? Yeah, Hawaii is the one she's talking about, palmetto bugs, or they're the American roach. Yeah, typically what they do is... They'll get high, and they're not really good flyers, but they'll sort of like glide down. They're not really strong in flight. Yeah, but we have those here. Did they fly here? Like, I mean, when they're here, the ones that we see, are those flyers also? Well, they can glide. They can't really fly. Yeah, the, the ones in the sewer, they, they get the point A to point B by going through the sewer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, they are. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's going on. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I, would, I would tell you other German cockroach stories about restaurants and places. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no, no. We won't do that. So. so, like I say, any interesting insects that you find, you know, put them in like a little vodka or gin or something that has like 40% alcohol and, you know, just, just something I like. <laughs> well, yeah, there's been a change. You used to be able to do that. You used to be able to send insects and, and ethanol. 70, 
But then, you know, because of the terrorist thing, it looks like you, know, you might be a terrorist and you need, know, you know, incense and alcohol. You can bring it in and drop it off and work too. But yeah, so if you encounter these or the big head of ant, you know, or that promotes the termite, we'd, we'd love to have those. Well, it doesn't matter. But oh, I want these guys to like because I'd love to do this. All right. I think it's time. Is it time for lunch?